Welcome to ES Anime. Today, I will show you an action fantasy anime from 2019 called, Demon Slayer. If you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Tanjiro Kamado lives in the snowy mountains with his family, surviving by selling charcoal in the nearby town. When he returns home one day, he discovers that his entire family has been slaughtered by a demon attack, except for his younger sister, Nezuko, who has begun to transform into a demon herself. Demon Slayer Giyu Tomioka appears to kill Nezuko, but Tanjiro attempts to defend her. Surprised to see Nezuko resist her demonic urges and protect her brother, and impressed by Tanjiro's potential, he decides to spare her life, instructing him to go find Sakanji Yurokodaki on Mount Sagiri. Before leaving, Tanjiro and Nezuko bury their family. Tanjiro and Nezuko are on their way to Mount Sagiri when they come across a demon in a nearby temple. They successfully restrain it, but he is hesitant to kill it, instead leaving it to burn in the sunlight. At this point, he meets Sakanji Yurokodaki, who reprimand him for his lack of resolve and warns him about the consequences of killing a human. After allowing Nezuko to rest, Yurokodaki puts Tanjiro to the test by climbing and descending the dangerous and trap-infested Mount Sagiri. Tanjiro completes the task, and Yurokodaki accepts him as a student after recalling the letter from Giyu requesting that he train Tanjiro to become a demon slayer. Tanjiro trains under Yurokodaki's supervision to become a member of the Demon Slayer Corps, but he is told that he must first qualify for final selection. Tanjiro is subjected to months of rigorous training in the mountains, including instruction in total concentration and water breathing techniques. After six months, Yurokodaki assigns Tanjiro his final task in order for him to compete in final selection, he must slice an enormous boulder. He begins to lose hope after another six months of failing to make a dent when he is suddenly attacked by a fellow swordsman, Sabito, who criticizes him for his weaknesses. Makomo, another swordsman, assists Tanjiro in his training, revealing that they are both former students of Yurokodaki. Six more months of training culminate in a final sparring match in which Tanjiro successfully strikes Sabito. As the two congratulate him on his success and fade away, it is revealed that his slash had actually sliced the boulder in half. Yurokodaki is taken aback by Tanjiro's feat of slicing the boulder, congratulating him and telling him to return alive from final selection. He arrives with a group of others who want to be demon slayers and learns they must survive for seven days among demons trapped in the mountains. During his battles, he encounters the Hand Demon, a massive grotesque demon who he learns specifically targets Yurokodaki's children, killing all of them, including Sabito and Makomo. Despite the fact that the demon nearly overwhelms Tanjiro, he manages to overcome his defenses and successfully slice his neck with his water breathing. After being beheaded, the Hand Demon begins to fade away, and Tanjiro sensing a scent of sadness emanating from the demon, prays for it to be reborn in a better life allowing the souls of Yurokodaki's previous students to be laid to rest. Tanjiro survives the seven days of final selection only to discover that only three others did as well. Tanjiro returns to Yurokodaki's after receiving the ores needed to make their swords, where he reunites with him and Nezuko. Soon after, a swordsmith named Haga Nezuka appears to hand Tanjiro his sword, which turns black, surprising everyone. His Kasugai Crow soon appears and gives him the details for his first mission, which is to investigate a town where young girls are being abducted. Tanjiro travels to the northwest village to investigate the disappearances of young girls. There he meets Kazumi, whose fiancé has recently vanished, leaving him despondent. Tanjiro waits until night, when the demon attacks its next victim, before intervening to save her. He discovers that the swamp demon not only has two other clones of himself, but he can also create puddles that appear from anywhere. Tanjiro struggles to protect Kazumi and the girl while also attempting to kill the demons, becoming overwhelmed until Nezuko intervenes, shocking the swamp demon that he is accompanied by a demon. While Nezuko guards Kazumi and the girl, Tanjiro battles the swamp demon and his clones. Tanjiro leaps into the swamp, where two clones are hiding, and defeats them with his whirlpool form. Nezuko battles the last clone until Tanjiro arrives and corners it. He inquires of the demon about Muzan Kibatsuji, the original demon capable of transforming humans into demons, but he refuses to tell him anything, terrified by Muzan's previous threats. 
Tanjiro consoles Kazumi about his lost fiancé after killing the demon, before heading to his next mission in Tokyo's Asakusa. Tanjiro detects a scent that was present in his house the day his family was murdered shortly after arriving. He pursues it until he finds a man with his wife and daughter, who turns out to be Muzan in disguise. To avoid being confronted, Muzan transforms a bystander into a demon in the crowd. Muzan flees as Tanjiro battles the demon, but not before hearing his promise to find him again. Muzan recalls a feared enemy from his past who wore the same Hanafuda earrings as Tanjiro, and assigns two demons, Susamaru and Yahaba, to find and kill him. Meanwhile, Tanjiro is rescued by a demon named Tamayo and a boy named Yushiro, who reveals that she is a doctor with plans to take down Muzan as well. Tanjiro and Nezuko are brought to Tamayo's house by the eccentric Yushiro, who reveals during their conversation that it may be possible to create a cure for becoming a demon, but she will need blood samples from demons Muzan has had direct contact with in order to do so. When the four are suddenly attacked by a horde of Tamaris led by Susamaru and Yahaba, Tanjiro decides to accept this task. Susamaru smashes the hidden house with her powerful Tamari, revealing that she and Yahaba are members of the Twelve Kazuki, powerful demons who serve directly under Muzan. Susamaru uses one of her Tamari to decapitate Yushiro, and while he regenerates, Tanjiro struggles to avoid the balls, which swerve in physically impossible directions and are difficult to slash. Yushiro assists him in seeing the arrows used by Yahaba to telekinetically control Susamaru's Tamari. Despite the fact that Nezuko attacks Yahaba, the siblings are forced to switch opponents, with Yushiro joining in to fight Susamaru using his blood demon art. Yahaba initially dominates Tanjiro by altering his trajectory as he attempts to approach, and Nezuko's leg is blown off by a Tamari. Tanjiro on the other hand, recalls his training and despite his exhaustion, unleashes a combination of forms to use the direction of Yahaba's arrows to his advantage, closing the gap between him and beheading the demon. As Yahaba disintegrates, he tries to kill Tanjiro once more, sending him upward and to his death with his arrows. Tanjiro is forced to use successive forms in order to reduce his impact and survives, albeit exhausted. Tamayo gives Nezuko a healing serum, allowing her to rejoin the fight and increase her strength, matching Susamaru's power and now able to return her Tamari kicks. Tamayo uses her blood demon art to reduce Susamaru's alertness, causing her to say Muzan's name inadvertently and triggering a curse that kills her. Tamayo realizes both demons are not of the Twelve Kazuki after examining Susamaru's eyeball and noting the lack of a number on their eyes. Tanjiro laments Muzan's cruelty, lying to demons and exploiting their desperation. Despite the fact that Yurokodaki had hypnotized her into believing that humans must be protected, Nezuko's recognition of Tamayo and Yushiro as humans causes Tamayo to cry out in gratitude. Tanjiro encounters another demon slayer from Final Selection who is harassing a woman into marrying him as the siblings depart for their next mission. Tanjiro prevents Zenitsu Agatsuma, the demon slayer, from disturbing the woman. He admits that he wished to die during final selection because of his frailty and lack of resolve. Tanjiro's crow leads them to their next destination, a large woodland mansion, where they encounter two children, Shoichi and Teruko, who inform him that a demon has taken their brother. When he and a hesitant Zenitsu enter, leaving Nezuko's box outside, the children unexpectedly enter as well, until they are separated by the supernatural rooms, which move to the beat of a drum. Tanjiro and Teruko discover a large demon, the strongest in the house. Zenitsu and Shoichi come across another demon slayer wearing a boar mask while looking for an exit. Tanjiro witnesses the demon's blood demon art, in which he moves around the room with drums implanted in his body. The boar-headed demon slayer enters at that point, ready to attack. The demon's blood demon art prevents the rogue slayer from attacking. When the demon demonstrates its ability to cause powerful invisible slashes with another drum in his body, he argues with Tanjiro and nearly attacks him. Tanjiro is transported to another room, where he meets the sibling's oldest brother, Kiyoshi. Another demon cornered Zenitsu and Shoichi, and Zenitsu loses consciousness from fear. However, while sleeping, he uses thunder breathing to instantly kill the demon. After snapping, Zenitsu believes Shoichi defended him after seeing the demon's corpse on the ground and returns to being terrified. Another demon is encountered by the rogue slayer, but it is quickly dispatched. 
Kyogai, the drum demon, reveals his desire to kill the oldest brother for his blood and reclaim his place in the Twelve Kazuki, which Muzan had previously stripped him of. Tanjiro battles Kyogai and begins to adapt to the movements of his drums after directing the siblings to safety. Despite not being fully recovered, he presses on and recalls Yorokodaki's lessons about the adaptability of water breathing, which motivates him to fight. Kyogai, enraged by Tanjiro's refusal to surrender, launches an erratic attack that nearly kills him. He recalls his previous life as a human, during which he was a drummer and composer, but his hobby was ridiculed and mocked by others. He attacks Tanjiro more aggressively, enraged by his painful past. Tanjiro maintains his water breathing while still injured and eventually closes the gap between Kyogai, successfully decapitating him. As he fades, he asks Tanjiro if he truly believed his blood demon art was incredible, which Tanjiro acknowledges, despite the fact that he cannot be forgiven for murdering innocents. Touched by Tanjiro's words, Kyogai sobs as he fades away as if someone had finally recognized his drumming. He draws Kyogai's blood with a vial and gives the sample to Tamayo's cat, which then vanishes. When he takes the siblings outside, he finds Zenitsu, who had been thrown out of the house earlier, being kicked by the rogue slayer for protecting Nezuko's box. He reveals that he had known all along that Tanjiro was carrying a demon in the box, but because he was so kind, he knew there had to be a reason. Tanjiro comes to his defense and attacks the rogue demon slayer. Tanjiro breaks the rogue slayer's ribs in an attempt to stop him, but the slayer fights back, despite the demon slayer's taboo against harming one another. The slayer continues to attack, fighting like an animal, forcing Tanjiro to retaliate. Tanjiro eventually headbutts him, causing the boar mask to fall off. The slayer reveals himself as a Nosuke Hashibira, with a feminine and delicate face despite his strong and muscular body. Inosuke passes out, but later awakens to find the others burying the dead in the mansion. The Kasugai crow of Tanjiro then directs them to descend the mountain. After saying their goodbyes to the siblings, the demon slayers travel to a house where an elderly woman inside assists them in resting and recovering. Inosuke tells them that the only reason he entered final selection was to test his abilities on demons, and Zenitsu questions Tanjiro about his reason for carrying a demon as Nezuko exits the box herself. He chases Tanjiro, angry at him for having a girl with him all this time, without even giving him the chance to explain. Tanjiro's Kasugai crow informs the three demon slayers of their next mission, which will take place on Mount Natagumo. They bid their hosts farewell and set out for the mountain. When night falls, Zenitsu becomes frightened and hesitant. They come across another demon slayer, only to have him pulled back into the mountain. Inosuke takes the initiative, and Tanjiro follows. Zenitsu remains on the sidelines, too afraid to enter. They come across another demon slayer, Murata, in a forest covered in spider webs. He reveals that ten of them were sent to the mountain, but they began killing each other without warning. Murata, Tanjiro, and Inosuke are attacked by demon slayers, but they soon realize they are being controlled by the webs that are attached to them. A short, pale demon confronts them, demanding that they leave his family or mother will kill them. In need of a plan, Inosuke employs his beast breathing and precise sense of touch to locate a demon. Meanwhile, after learning of the numerous deaths, the Demon Slayer Corps dispatched two Hashiras, Giyu and Shinobu, to assist. Murata stays behind to repel the controlled Demon Slayers, while Tanjiro and Inosuke flee, only to be confronted by the remaining controlled Demon Slayers. The puppeteer demon, Mother, is soon threatened by the earlier mentioned demon, Rui, into killing them faster or he will tell, Father. Mother, terrified, drives the controlled slayers further and more desperately. Tanjiro and Inosuke figure out how to stop the webs, but Mother pulls the webs that are attached to the demon slayers' heads, breaking their necks. Tanjiro, enraged, decides to press on and find her. They continue into the forest, where they encounter Mother's most powerful doll, a large, bladed, headless demon. Tanjiro and Inosuke successfully kill the giant doll by coordinating their breathing. Inosuke unexpectedly launches Tanjiro into the air, where he spots Mother and descends to kill her. Initially terrified, she realizes she will be liberated from the abuse she has been subjected to and accepts her fate. When Tanjiro sees her surrender, he chooses the gentlest water-breathing form and gives her a peaceful death. 
Mother warns Tanjiro that a member of the Twelve Kazuki is on the mountain as a thank you for blessing her final moments. While Tanjiro and Inosuke reunite, Zenitsu discovers a spider with a human head. He flees into a clearing strewn with webs, where he sees captured demon slayers transform into spiders. The family's son appears, telling Zenitsu that he has already been bitten and will transform as well. He climbs a tree in vain, terrified, as Sun mocks him about his fate. Zenitsu reflects on his time in training and how despite his desire to live up to his master's expectations, he repeatedly refused to train. He loses consciousness and begins to attack, but Sun's constant barrage of poison disrupts his form, which is revealed to be the first and only form of thunder breathing he could do. Despite this, his master encouraged him to perfect it. Zenitsu recalls being chastised by another student for his weakness and training under their master, a respected former Thunder Hashira. Despite the pain he has experienced throughout his life, his master's perseverance and stewardship despite his cowardice, encourages him to continue. He decapitates Sun using his own version of thunder breathing and tries to slow the poison's effects. Meanwhile, Tanjiro and Inosuke attack daughter, who calls out to father, who emerges from the forest, determined to kill them. Giyu and Shinobu reach Mount Natagumo and decide to split up to cover more ground. Because of his tougher skin, Tanjiro and Inosuke's blades are unable to harm father. He eventually flings Tanjiro away, leaving Inosuke to fight him alone, and he eventually succeeds in chopping off a hand. Shinobu discovers Zenitsu, who is near death from the poison. Tanjiro arrives safely, but he witnesses Rui torturing daughter over family matters. He mocks their familial bond, which enrages Rui. Tanjiro fights him but is overwhelmed by his steel-like threads and forced to retreat. Rui, enraged by his words and Tanjiro's refusal to back down, threatens to slowly kill him. Simultaneously, Inosuke is quickly overpowered by father and severely injured after his swords break while attempting to cut father's neck. When Giyu arrives and rescues him, he is grabbed by the head and slowly crushed. When father retaliates, the Hashira instantly kills him. Tanjiro attempts a frontal assault on Rui, but his sword is slashed by an incoming thread. Inosuke, impressed by Giyu's skill, challenges him but is tied to a tree and denied. Shinobu administers an antidote to Zenitsu in order to stop the poison, while the others are cared for by Kakushi, trained assistants and crew to the Demon Slayer Corps. Tanjiro's face is partially slashed as he barely avoids Rui's attack. Unable to defeat him, he is nearly killed by his webs, only for Nezuko to join in and take the hit, seriously injuring her. Rui, taken aback by her devotion to him, declares that she will become his new sister, rejecting and dismissing daughter. He reveals himself to be lower five of the twelve Kazuki and kidnaps Nezuko, stringing her up in his threads and inflicting horrific wounds on her. He taunts Tanjiro into beheading him, but he fails because his neck is too tough. He manages to cut the threads using his water breathing's last form, but Rui infuses new ones into his blood, making them more powerful. He prepares to kill Tanjiro in a cage of threads using his blood demon art. He sees a vision of his father near death, telling him to breathe and become Hanokami. He recalls his frail father performing a night-long dance in frigid weather every year, using a special breathing style that never let him tire. Tanjiro recalls the Hanokami Kagura style and employs it to successfully cut the stronger threads. Tanjiro uses the new technique to overwhelm Rui as he fights to save Nezuko. When he sends more threads to kill him, Nezuko uses her blood demon art to ignite her blood and burn the threads away. Tanjiro beheads Rui with Nezuko's burning blood, declaring that their bond will never be severed. Tanjiro crawls to Nezuko after the battle, only to smell blood instead of ash after a demon dies. Rui reveals that he had cut off his own head in order to avoid death. Enraged, he prepares to kill Tanjiro once more, but Giyu intervenes. Rui is defeated by Giyu, who uses his own form of water breathing to defeat him despite using his most powerful attack. Daughter flees the forest after recalling how Rui discovered her and invited her to join his family. Rui enlisted the help of other demons, assigning them roles as family members. Rui's abuse, on the other hand, caused conflict and pain within the family. One of daughter's sisters attempted to flee the family one night, but was apprehended and left to die in the sunlight by Rui. 
Daughter encounters Murata in the present and traps him in an acidic cocoon. She is unexpectedly approached by Shinobu, who wishes to befriend her but only after ruthlessly punishing her for murdering the demon slayers. Daughter fights back, but is outmatched by Shinobu's superior speed. Shinobu, unable to behead demons, wields a special sword laced with lethal wisteria-based poison. She murders Daughter and sets Murata free. As Rui's head falls, he notices Tanjiro hugging Nezuko and remembers why he wanted to start a family in the first place, to feel a familial bond. Rui recalls his childhood, when he was born with a frail and weak body and was forced to stay indoors at all times. Muzan discovered him and, pitied, and transformed Rui. When his parents discovered he had killed and eaten someone, they attempted to kill him as penance, only for Rui to mortally wound them both. As his mother dies, she apologizes for not providing him with a strong body, and he recalls his father's intentions as merciful. Rui was devastated when he realized they had a genuine bond, but Muzan pushed him to the contrary, driving him to become cold and heartless. He crawls to Tanjiro, who comforts him after smelling a grief scent. When Rui is reunited with his parents in hell, they forgive him, causing him to cry. Giyu chastises Tanjiro for sympathizing with demons, but he defends them as hopeless, tragic creatures who were once human. Giyu defends Tanjiro and Nezuko from Shinobu after recalling their previous encounter. She and Giyu fight in confusion, while Tanjiro flees with Nezuko. As he flees, he encounters a girl attempting to murder Nezuko, who knocks him unconscious but is unable to slash the evading Nezuko. A Kasugai crow then announces that Tanjiro and Nezuko will be taken to the Demon Slayer headquarters to recover, along with Inosuke and Zenitsu. Tanjiro awakens later to find himself in front of the Hashira. Tanjiro is put on trial for carrying a demon Nezuko by the Hashira, the strongest of the Demon Slayer Corps. They debate whether he should be executed, with Giyu defending him, but Shinobu warns them not to be too hasty. Tanjiro explains Nezuko's situation, which they reject because of his bias. They are then joined by the harsh and aggressive Sanemi Shinazugawa, who stabs Nezuko through her box, resulting in a conflict. They are then joined by the master, the revered Kagaya Yubayashiki, who informs them that Tanjiro's actions have been sanctioned. When the majority of the Hashira continue to disagree, he reveals a letter from Yurokodaki, the former water Hashira in which he writes to Kagaya that Nezuko is fully capable of resisting humans and that he, Giyu, and Tanjiro would kill themselves if this ever happened. Tanjiro has met Muzan Kibitsuji and has been directly targeted by demons sent by him, shocking the Hashira. Despite his importance, Sanemi is still opposed to housing a demon and wishes to demonstrate that Nezuko cannot be trusted. He slashes his forearm, stabs Nezuko twice more, and taunts her, waving his blood in her face. Nezuko emerges from her box, salivating, and looks at Tsunemi. In front of everyone, Nezuko demonstrates her ability to withstand Tsunemi's taunts, and Kagaya sees this as direct proof, and though he knows some will disagree, he tells Tanjiro that he recognizes both as demon slayers. Tanjiro swears to kill Muzan, but Kagaya advises him to begin small by killing a Kazuki demon first. After his trial, the Kakushi transports the siblings to Shinobu's estate, the Butterfly Mansion, to recover. They come across Shinobu's protege, Kanao Suyuri, whom Tanjiro recognizes as the girl from Final Selection. Inside, he rejoins Zenitsu and Inosuke, both of whom are still recovering from their previous battles. The Hashira gather for a meeting to discuss the increasing damage caused by demons and the less skilled new demon slayers. Rui's drastic actions, according to Kagaya, indicate that Muzan is most likely not near Mount Natagumo as he always creates a diversion, as he did in Asakusa. Finally, Kagaya acknowledges them all as the strongest Hashira since the beginning and renews his faith in them. Alone, he swears they will kill Muzan Kibitsuji without fail. As he recovers, Tanjiro meets with Murata, who tells him solemnly about his meeting with the Hashira and how they chastised the new demon slayers as inept. Shinobu arrives and reminds Tanjiro that he and Inosuke need to be rehabilitated, as they return from their sessions exhausted and broken, frightening Zenitsu. When he recovers, he sees the unusual and difficult challenges they've been facing, and he chastises them for acting unhappy while being touched by girls the entire time. They are re-motivated to train, but become demoralized when they are unable to beat Kanao, 
causing Zenitsu and Inosuke to quit. Sumi, Kyo, and Naho of the Butterfly Mansion reveal to Tanjiro that Kanao uses a different technique called Total Concentration Constant, which she and the Hashira always use. Tanjiro trains alone, using the mansion surroundings as makeshift obstacles and keeping his breathing constant. Shinobu greets him and commends his spirit, telling him she would like to entrust her dream of demon and human peace to him. Tanjiro asks if she is angry despite her constant smile. Stunned, Shinobu expresses his pain at witnessing the demon's destruction, as well as the other Hashiras. She tells him about her older sister, who was friendly with demons like him. Shinobu attempted to adopt her kind personality after she was killed, but struggled due to her hatred of demons. Tanjiro focuses on the pain of his family's death and his promise to Nezuko after hearing her trust in him. Tanjiro enlists the help of Naho, Sumi, and Kyo to maintain total concentration constant at all times. Tanjiro eventually improves, and he can now chase Kanao and blow up a small training gourd. Zenitsu and Inosuke notice this and want to improve, with Shinobu appearing and encouraging them in ways that they find appealing. The three are now hard at work outside in the yard, attempting to increase their strength and master total concentration constant. Shinobu invites Kanao to join them, she flips a coin and reflects on her past. She was born into an abusive and impoverished family and was beaten for showing emotion, which broke her psychologically. She was sold as a slave and met Shinobu and her sister Kanae, who bought her and adopted her into the butterfly mansion. They see firsthand how incapable she is of making decisions, which makes Shinobu nervous. Kanae refuses to give up and hands Kanao a coin to aid her decision making. Kanao walks away from the trio training after making his decision. Haganezuka and Kozo Kanamori give Tanjiro and Inosuke new swords, though Haganezuka is enraged after learning Tanjiro's original sword was broken, and Kozo is enraged by Inosuke chipping away at his blades with a rock. Tanjiro quickly becomes the first person to defeat Kanao in all challenges, forcing Zenitsu and Inosuke to work even harder. Tanjiro inquires about his Hinokami Kagura when he meets with Shinobu for his checkup. Though Shinobu is unsure, she suggests he ask the flame Hashira, Kyojuro Rengoku, who is currently on a mission. In his room, Tanjiro reaffirms his desire to assist Tamayo's research and return his sister to human form, but he becomes unsure, Nezuko unexpectedly responds, encouraging him. Months after Rui's death, the remaining lower ranks are summoned to a castle ruled by a demon wielding a biwa. They are confronted by a disguised Muzan, who informs them that Rui has been murdered and questions why the lower ranks are so weak. He then kills them all for doing things he considers disrespectful, with the exception of lower one, whom he spares after hearing his final words about enjoying the agony of his comrades suffering and the honor of dying by his hands. Muzan gives him a large amount of his blood to strengthen him, telling him to kill a Hashira and that if he can kill Tanjiro, he will be rewarded with more blood. Lower One is expelled from the castle and sees a vision of his intended victim. A Kasugai crow informs Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke of their new mission to investigate the Mugen train, where 40 people have gone missing. He bids farewell to the residents of the mansion, including Kanao, whom Tanjiro persuades to listen to the voice of her heart and make her own decisions after she explains her process of flipping a coin to decide things she hasn't been ordered to do. Kanao is smitten and taken aback by Tanjiro's reassuring words after his coin flip results in this decision. He also expresses gratitude to Giyu for his dedication to protecting him and Nezuko. The three arrive at the train station, with Inosuke causing a commotion because he has never seen a train before. They are forced to flee from the police because demon slayers are not recognized by the government, which is unaware of the existence of demons. They leap onto the departing train, which also includes Kyojuro and Lower One. If you loved this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on another one. Until next time.